Hi, this is Paul. I'm going to talk about building a business intelligence solution using the self-service Power BI components uh, that are in Excel 2013. Uh, before we do that, I want to talk about some lessons learned over the years. Successful BI projects don't naturally occur. The behavior of data is governed by some universal principles that are kind of like the laws of physics in that they apply to all projects regardless of size, scale, and complexity. And I'm going to demonstrate these principles in practice. These are universal data problems, which you can use as categories or a checklist to improve the success of your projects. And I'll explain these um, through practice in the demonstration. Categorically, problems to solve and deal with in any BI projects are the trustworthiness of source data, dealing with data quality, conformity, and completeness, ownership of the data moving forward, and how to maintain your solution and maintain your data. So let's open up Excel. This is Excel 2013 Pro Plus with all of the Power BI components installed. I've created a new workbook. Let's talk about our objectives. Now, some people believe that self-service BI projects are easy. And I thought maybe these are some of the same people who believe in UFOs and other unexplained phenomenon. So I thought it would be fun to use some real data about UFO sightings. So I'm going to go out to the web and I'm going to go to the National UFO Reporting Center. And so this is a website that has all of the UFO sightings for, for hundreds of years, actually. And then um, all of the, uh, the sightings that have been reported in the United States over the past 100, 120 years or so. So if we go down to the report database, you, you can see that I can get this data uh, grouped by date. We go way back in time. You can see the first report there is 200 AD. And then we have a, a handful of reports that have occurred uh, uh, many, many years ago. So, so this one in 1790, um, a, a fireball in uh, reported in England. This one in 1762, also in England. Uh, this is one of my favorites. This one reported in 1800 by Thomas Jefferson, who uh, saw a light that uh, was unexplainable for 15 seconds. So uh, hard, hard to think that the Air Force was testing something in 1800. Now, we can get these records, about 100,000 records for UFO sightings, uh, grouped in a few different ways. So this, these are grouped by shape. And I'm going to copy that URL to the clipboard. And I just want to show you that if I click on one of these links, that actually passes the name of the shape of that UFO that was reported in the URL. And that's important because we're going to use that when we create a query in Power Query. So there's, there, this is a diamond shape circle shapes, different different kinds of shapes. So in uh, the Power Query ribbon, I'm going to choose from web and paste that URL. And that runs a query, creates a new query in Power Query. The Navigator pane opens up and you can see that Power Query discovered the table on this page. And if I edit that, it creates this query and shows me the results. So there you see the same thing we were just looking at on the web page as a table here in the Power Query Designer. Now, Table 0 isn't a very descriptive name, so I, I want to rename that to something that makes more sense. Now, this query is going to be kind of the foundation that I'll lay a lot of other work on top of. So I'm going to call this Sightings. And then I'll also rename the first column in my query results from Reports to Shape. Now you can see in the results there are about 3,100 unspecified reports, unspecified shapes, and we don't want to, to report on that. I want to get rid of unspecified. You can see if I go back to the website and click on unspecified, this is one exception where it doesn't pass a word in the URL. So that's our first data quality issue that we need to deal with, and I'm just going to, to eliminate that by filtering it uh, in Power Query and every other shape name is actually passed. So uh, I'll click Close and Load, which loads the results of that query into my data model. I'm going to go to my workbook settings. There are two settings that I want to change. One is that I want to ignore the privacy levels, which uh, means that Power Query is not going to prompt me every time I run a query to, to ask me if, if that's permissible. And I also want to load data only into my data model and not into an Excel worksheet, just in, right into a power pivot. This data model is essential to meet our reporting requirements, and we need a plan. 
So we want to see sightings by state and city. I would need a report date table with year, month, and day, time of day, and then shapes by category. So let's jump back into Excel and we'll work on our shape category because we have incomplete data at this point. We have lots of shape data, uh, but we have lots of different shapes that are not organized in a way that supports our reporting. So I'm going to go back to our sightings query and I'm going to load the shapes into a worksheet. So we have all of these shapes, but you can see that for a lot of these UFO shapes, there was only one sighting or very few sightings. What we want to do is be able to enter our own categories so that we can consolidate these sightings um, into a category of shapes. And then if need be, we can uh, then drill down from the category into the specific shapes. You see a lot of these shapes only have one or a few sightings like flare and crescent and hexagon. So I want to group those into something else. So I've created a category uh, column in this uh, worksheet table and I'm just going to enter my own categories. We'll say that this is other or unknown. And uh, this is also going to be other or unknown. This is going to be a, a miscellaneous shape. And then since I have several of these, I've, I've actually um, uh, already done this. And I'll copy and paste the results into this column to save some time. So we have four categories now that can help us consolidate this uh, incomplete data. And now that I have that in a worksheet, I can actually create a new query based on the table in my worksheet just by clicking from table and that creates a new query and then I'll just give that query a new name. Let's get rid of the uh, the count column. I don't need that. We just used that uh, so I could see what I needed to consolidate and uh, we'll just call this shape category. And then I'll close and load that into the data model. Now, if I click on one of the shapes on the website, again, that passes that shape into this URL. I need to copy that to the clipboard because I'm going to create a function that allows me to pass in that shape. And then we'll call that on every row of my, my citing table right now that just has one row per shape. So we paste that into the URL after selecting from web to create a new query here in the Power Query Navigator. I'll right click on table zero and choose edit. That opens up the Power Query Editor and then I'm going to rename table zero to my uh, sightings for shape. That's going to be the name of the function that I want to call that I pass a shape into and then get back the individual citing records. So I'm going to go to the advanced editor here on the home tab that's also available here on the, the view tab. When we click advanced editor this opens up a window that shows me the script that Power Query had created using the user interface. You see that that each of the steps are listed here in this Power Query scripting language or, or M script. I can convert this into a function very simply by giving it the name of a parameter in parentheses followed by equals greater than. And that simply means this is now a function that I can call. I'm going to pass this shape parameter into it. And I can use that as a variable inside this code. It's very simple. I'll just use some simple string concatenation by passing that literal value with uh, ampersands. And then I click done and that turns this into a function. And then when I click the invoke button, it prompts me for a value. We can go ahead and type the name of a shape. It actually goes out to the web, runs the query, comes back, brings back the data. There we see the results. And then I'll, I'll remove that, that testing uh, step. And I'm going to copy the name of the function because I'm going to use that in another query. Now, we uh, will close the editor and we'll go ahead and keep the work that we've done. I'm going to go back to my sightings query, right click and edit. And here's where I want to call my sightings for shape function. So, and we do this, first of all, I, I don't need that count column, so I'll right click and remove that. And I'm going to add a new column. 
I want this to the right of my shapes column. I click add column and add custom column. And here I'll just give this a name. And this is just, uh, just for internal use. And I'm going to paste the name of that function. And then in parentheses, we pass the shapes column or field in parentheses. Does a little syntax check at the bottom. I'll click OK. And you can see that this actually brings back a table. And if I click on this expand button, it will expand the individual detail rows um, and then show me uh, every single detail row for each shape. And this is going to bring back a lot of data, uh, about 90,000 records. When I click that, it asks me what columns I want to include. I don't want to prefix that with the original column name, which would be sightings. Uh, because I know that these are unique names and then we click that and it actually, actually expands the whole thing and shows me some preview rows. Now I do have a redundant column. I have my shapes column then I have the shape column that was returned by the function and that's okay. I, I could delete one of those columns if I wanted to but uh, here if I scroll down you can see that there are a lot of results but it's actually only brought back a thousand rows as a preview and when we actually load this. I'm going to choose close and load. We actually load this. It will go out to the web, go get the shapes again, and then call the function and uh, bring back all of the detail row. To create my report dates reference table, I choose blank query as a source. And I'm going to use a little bit of script to actually generate a table. I don't actually have to have stored data. I can just use some script to generate a table. So I'm going to call this report dates and um, this is just a, a blank query. It's, it doesn't really have a data source at all. I'm just going to go up to the formula bar and I'm going to use some simple M script language functions. The list.dates function allows me to say, uh, put a range of dates into a table. I'll start with January 1st, 1900 is the first date. And then uh, I'm going to paste some finished script here, so I'm not spending a lot of time walking through code. So we'll see a quick transition. And there's uh, my finished code. And uh, you can see that my end date is actually uh, December 31st of 2015. So when I run that, you see that I, I get back some dates uh, with one row per date. Now, in the Power uh, Pivot model, I'll, I'll use some DAX script to uh, complete the year, month, and day columns uh, for each of those dates. But I just need a, a contiguous list of dates for now. So that's populated, and I've got my report date table. Now I'll also choose blank query, and now I need my times. And for this, I need a table of just whole number values, uh, one for each minute of a day. And to do that, I, I just really want to bring back a list of numbers, and then I can do some simple math. And uh, this is a very simple piece of script. I use set braces, and I'll say 0 um, to 1439. Actually, it's dot, dot, not hyphen. And that's just going to bring back this series of numbers. There are 1440 minutes in a day, but the first minute of the day is midnight, and I want to go to 1159. So there's my list of numbers. And then again, in the PowerPivot uh, model designer, we'll finish this uh, by doing some simple math and calling some functions on those numbers. So that becomes a placeholder. We'll go ahead and save that. And so that gets written into the model. And now we're ready to begin our data modeling.